Okay, so basically, I'm just gonna walk through a simple strategy that I coded. It's just moving average uh, envelopes. Uh, somebody asked me, "Hey, how do I how do I trade? How, you know, what kind of strategies can I use?" This is a simple strategy that I use to develop an algorithm, and what it'll do. Before envelope, there'll be a moving average crossover that's really small. Um, you can set this to like an 8 or a 10. Here I have it at 8. Uh, there's also a 20. There's also a 50, and then there's a 100. And the idea is that when all of these are basically aligned, when the start line, uh, essentially when the 8 is above the 20, and the 20 is above the 50, and the 50 is above the 100, then we're looking for a buying opportunity. It's a moving average crossover. Um, so when that happens, essentially the algorithm will go in and it will buy. And what it will do is it will exit when the 8, in this case, crosses back below the actual um, 20, in this case. So that's that's what I put it here, and I'm going to walk you through how that works. That's how you build an algorithm uh, in Quantopian. Uh, this is with Python. You have to do your specific imports all the libraries that you want to use. Uh, in this case, you can see some of the ones that I'm using here. Some of the stuff I have in here from uh, other algorithms that I've written. And, uh, I'm not even using some of it, but uh, it's in there. Uh, so the max price you're going to set, uh, these are just variables, there's max, minimum price. Um, I take tend to trade poor price stocks uh, because they move faster. I like volatility, and I'm into big money making algorithms with small investments. Uh, basically, throwaway money. Um, so, you know, $10,000, $20,000, stuff like that. Uh, not anything big. Uh, it's just, you know, small amounts of money. So here you have dollar volume. That's just, you know, it's just basically price times volume. You want um, enough liquidity in a position. You don't want to have to be holding stocks, you know, for multiple days because you can't sell them. So that's what liquidity is going to do for you. Shares outstanding. You have to be really careful with this number. You don't want it to be too low. Right now I've set it. 20 million, so it's going to trade every, anything above uh, 20 million uh, because low float stocks will kill you with volatility. So, you want to make sure that you know, this is actually still pretty low, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, traders will trade in this range at 20 million, uh, but you don't want to go down to like say 10 million or 5 million, something ridiculous like that to where like this thing will just jump up and down and go crazy. On you. Start minutes of 15, it's when the algorithm is going to start. Drilling stop here, I have this set to uh, basically uh, 20%. So basically what it will do is it will trail the price um, you know, by that. So whatever the price is multiplied by this, it, that's, that's the trail. Um, so it's, it's going to look at that and, and that's what it will do. So every time it moves you know, 20%, it will actually set that. And basically what we're saying is this is our profit target. And 0.9, which is 10%, this is our max loss. So this is a 2 one risk ratio. Right here. Uh, in this particular case, we have we want to enter below the VWAP on any uh, buy that we actually go in on. Uh, and I, I set this. You can set this to whatever you want. If you set it to one, it's just going to enter at VWAP. If you set it to 0.98, it's going to look for an opportunity with a limit order below the VWAP, and um, it may not get that position, right? So you know, it's just it's it's however you want to configure it. Um, I have this set to only so this is a long only algorithm uh, set long only and uh, here you can see the commission is set to zero the cost is set to zero because that's the cost on there uh, I wouldn't trade this or use this algorithm anyway actually I, I wouldn't really use this algorithm to be quite honest with you because I have better ones um, here I have two functions close positions one just uh, closes positions at market open based on whether or not um, actually met the threshold. So for instance, if it crosses back below um, the 20, like I stated before, you know, if it crosses below the 20 at open, then it's going to close that position. Uh, here, rebalance, this is where we're running, uh, you know, building up our, our, basically, our pipeline to get all of our stocks, and that just runs every minute. And it starts after 15 minutes. Uh, you need to give the VWAP some time to calculate get a gist of where the stock is going what, so you can figure out where to buy it. If you just start VWAP initially, it's just going to be part of the prices. So it's not going to work well. Uh, and if you, if you set it too long, then you know you can miss, miss out on opportunities. So here you have the pipeline. I also incorporate VIX, which is basically the volatility index. This is important. 
if I run this algorithm now between uh, 2008 to 2009, you'll still see that it will make money. Uh, and the reason is, is because it's not going to enter into positions where the VIX is going to be above uh, 20. Um, so, um, because when it crosses above 20, you know, the, the S&P 500 will tend to uh, go down. And as it goes down, uh, everything will go down with it. So the stock market you know, has correlation. Um, you know, usually when it goes bad for the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, it's going to go bad pretty much for everybody. Um, a few exceptions. Slope here is just calculating. You know, I want to see um, you know, how the algorithm is performing um, in terms of a 100 day period. So basically, I want an upslope. I want a slope that's greater than zero. I want to see something like this. I want to see a slope. I don't want to see anything going down like that because if you're you know, just slanting down like that and the price is going up and going up above it, then it's not doing what I want it to do. I want to see a slant going upwards, almost like a 45 degree angle type thing. Um, then you have other parameters in here. You can use PE, PE ratio, all this other stuff. I'll comment them out because I'm not using them. I don't need them for this algorithm. I only use those in uh, fundamental algorithms. Um, and here, this is just basically before trading start. This is just some basic setup that you have to do to set your algorithm up. And this is how they actually get the value for the mix here. Uh, in my rebalance, you can see uh, 8, 14, 20, 50. I got these variables here. I could have just used one for this and kind of spliced it, but I was being lazy. Uh, and plus, I'm not a Python guru anyway. Uh, I probably got like a year of Python under my belt. Um, so if you want to talk about Angular or you want to talk about you know anything else, I can pretty much code it anything. And this, this was hard for me to figure out. Um, so, you know, if you've been programming for a while, if you're a programmer, you can program it any language. Michael tells me, oh, I haven't done this before. I can't well, then something's wrong with you. Too much information out there for you to figure out what needs to be done. If you can't do it, then you're just not on the level that you need to be on as an architect or developer or full stack developer. That's my opinion. Um, here, current price. So we're looking through our security. We're basically, this, this list is empty. It's the cleared up here. You can see it. Uh, it's empty initially. And then we're going to populate that with our stocks as we filter. We also have the RSI in here, which is the relative strength index. If you know anything about that, that goes from 0 to 100, 30 is undersold, and um, oversold is at 70. So you don't want to be buying oversold stocks because they fit that pattern. Because if you do, you're going to get stopped out a lot of times because that's the, tendency, the stock has a tendency to turn at that point. Uh, even if it doesn't have a tendency to turn, you have to understand that traders kind of like, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? They essentially will get out at that particular point. So, you know, they're taught to do that, so they're going to do it. So, don't get caught in that. Here's the slope. It's just basically saying the slope of the 8 is greater than the 20, the 20 is greater than the 50, the 50 is greater than 100, and 100 is greater than 0. Which means all my slopes are going upwards. That's what I want. I want an RSI below 20, and I want the VIX to be less than 20. Right? Uh, this is important. I mean, <laughs> very, very important. Like I told you before. You know, if this number is above 20, I go long, trust me. Um, and you can, you can see that correlation on, on the chart. Uh, max leverage, this is just basically, this algorithm, this is what, I had a large algorithm that I built that was against uh, $10 million uh, for the contest, uh, which I basically made $6.4 million in, and some guy won who made like 300000 yeah, how does Quantopian explain that? That's what they can. Um, yeah, but you can make whatever you want out of that. Context that percentage, basically I have a, a diversify, I basically split up funds. I never, uh, I usually don't use a lot of leverage in these algorithms. I think this one has actually goes up a bit. But it never goes, never, it never borrows money, basically. That's the way I set this up. Because with where you have up here where your max leverage is set, um, set to 1, so you can't go above that. And you can set this to like 0 0.5 or whatever percentage you want. If you want to use like a dollar cost averaging strategy, you can go up there and you can set this to like say 0.5 or something. And when the stock tips to a certain level, maybe you buy more, you double down or something like that. But um, that's not always effective either. Uh, anyway, here we loop the list. You can see I'm getting the current price. Um, I'm getting the RSI. I'm doing all this other stuff. Actually, I just walked that in that. Okay, um, and then here we're actually putting in our buy. Notice something uh, important here, where I told you about the VWAP. 
we're going to look at calculate the VWAP, and then we're basically multiplying that by the discount. So if it's 0.99, we want to enter at 1% before below VWAP, the limit order. And these are some wrapper functions that I created. And we're going along, and um, this actually should just say um, the stock price set, not raised. But basically, we multiply that times our max loss, and we're saying if we get in a position and it hits our max loss, we're going to get out. So we set that stop loss initially when we do a buy, and those two orders go in. Close positions is going to run at open. It's going to show you what your leverage is. It's going to show you specifically what your losses and your wins. And this particular algorithm actually loses more than it wins, believe it or not, but the wins are so much bigger than the losses that it doesn't really matter. Um, here you have, we're looking through the positions. We're looking at open orders. If, if it's not an open order, then we can trade it. We'll go ahead and we'll run this. Against it. So here's again, the current price. These are our exit points. So we're looking at uh, our first moving average, our second moving average. What we're doing down here is we've got a trailing stop. So basically what this is saying is we have that trailing stop variable. We're saying that if we've passed, if we're greater than that stop, it should be greater than or equal to, to be quite honest with you. That's our profit target. We're going to set the current stop to that. And then we're going to set a stop loss right there and we're going to say stop loss raise. And then here's our exit. Criteria basically, we're saying we're getting out of this particular point, the stop has been reached. And if we're greater than the, if right here we're greater than cost basis, uh, which I set up here, then we count that as a win, right? And if we're less than cost basis, then we count that as a loss. Um, this algorithm will take small losses and essentially make big gains. You can see the rest of these. This is the VWAP formula, this is the diversification formula, stuff like that. And now here you can see where we have VIX and all this other stuff. Uh, use slope and all that. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of the algorithm. I'm just going to run it now. And I'm going to do a run full back test on this and we'll see exactly where it comes out to. And we can use the new, uh, what's, what's, I have a new window that they have there that will pop up. Let's see, it looks pretty cool. It's like green or something like that. Well, it didn't pop up. But basically, this is going to run now and it's going to show you this, this detail window here will show you specifically what you bought, when you bought it, um, and, and all, this, all this good stuff. So once this is all done, you can see all your daily positions and gains, and you can see all your daily positions and gains. And if you have uh, any, um, if you have any specific, um, you know, problems with your algorithm, this is where you'd actually go into the research to see where it is. So right now you can see the algorithm is performing. This is the S and P 500. You can see where it's at basically 6.33%. Um, uh, we're executing, we're going up and down. You know, there's a lot of volatility in what we're doing. And essentially, as you pretty much look at this, you can, you can see um, that, you know, it's, it's doing, it's a decent. It's going to finish like 100% for the year or something like that, uh, which isn't bad at all. Um, you know, so this is a strategy that you utilize really to kind of go along if you wanted to trade. But just remember that this is trading low cap one to five stocks. As you start to go higher and higher, you'll see less and less gains. And then at some point, I think once you get to like 10 bucks or so, you might as well just invest in the S&P 500 because you don't have enough movement really um, to kind of get uh, sort of profit out of it. So it wouldn't make sense. But that's pretty much um, you know, my throwaway algorithm that I give you guys for free. Uh, like I said, it's far less than any of the other algorithms that I've written. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I've written a lot of bad ones. But this one is just basically a long algorithm, and um, you know you can use it. Uh, you see the code. You know, if you want to use it on your Robinhood or something like that, just execute it manually by looking for those types of condition criteria, and uh, you know follow the trade. And, uh, you know if you use that strategy, then you, you might make some good money. Another thing too that you can't do with this. Um, Sometimes there's news catalysts and some other things that, you know, obviously you as a human being can factor in as you see it. So you'll know you know, when you're comparing two or three stocks, you know, which one is probably a better long opportunity. Whereas in the case of Quantopia, there's really no way that you can actually prove that it should be. Um, but they're just not that advanced at this point. So, you know, you can't really go for that. Um, but you can see here, uh, as this thing is, you, you can see all these little metrics in here, losses, leverage, gains, all this other stuff. And one thing to note, and this is the thing about trading. Trading is about risk management, right? 
So notice, I've got almost, in this particular algorithm, I've got 75 gains and 123 losses. Look at the gains. So what it's actually telling you is basically, it's not being wrong or right. It's basically risk management. And in this particular case, the risk management shows that you can make money being wrong most of the time. But if you just take small risks um, and, you know, enter, you know, enter proper, um, if you take good trades, uh, you'll still make money. And that's the whole thing. Uh, I have algorithms that, that I actually had to deal with one where, you know, it's like 72% effective, which is really, really high. Uh, traders never approach that. This one is, you know, you can see it's, it's very low in terms of its wins, but it's very high in terms of its gains. And uh, it's just all about, you know, how you execute trades, and how you automate your system. That's my little tutorial on this. Uh, you know, give me some feedback. Let me know if you like this. If you do, I'll probably make more videos. If not, 